Ptolemy II Soter was a Greek general and companion of Alexander the Great of the Kingdom of Macedon in northern Greece. But is he known well in history for just that? Do you know that apart from being a general, he was also a historian and ruler of Egypt and founder of the Ptolemaic dynasty from which the most known Queen Cleopatra was born? Well, without further delay, let's get into this video. Whoa wait. You've subscribed to this channel already right? No. Then go hit that subscribe button and tap the bell icon. It's free. Ptolemy I Soter was born in 367 BC or 366 BC in Macedonia. He was the son of the nobleman Lagus, a native of the Macedonian district of Eordaea and of Arsino, who was related to the Macedonian Argi dynasty. But many ancient sources claim that he was actually an illegitimate son of Philip II of Macedon. It is probably a later myth fabricated to glorify the Ptolemaic dynasty. If true, this would have made Ptolemy the half-brother of Alexander the Great. He was probably educated as a page at the royal court of Macedonia, where he became closely associated with Alexander. He was exiled in 337, along with other companions of the crown prince. When he returned, after Alexander's accession to the throne in 336, he joined the king's bodyguard. Ptolemy served with Alexander from his first campaigns and in the fall of 330, he was appointed personal bodyguard the Tsomatophylax to Alexander. He was one among the seven bodyguards of Alexander. With this capacity he then managed to capture the assassin of Darius III, the Persian Emperor, in 329 BC. He was closely associated with Alexander during the advance through the Persian highland. He played a principal part in the later campaigns in Afghanistan and India. He participated in the Battle of Issus, commanding troops on the left wing under the authority of Parmenion. As a result of Ptolemy's successful military performance, he became commander of the Macedonian fleet on the Hydasps, modern Jhelum in India. Alexander decorated him several times for his deeds and married him to the Persian Artakama at the mass wedding at Susa, the Persian capital, which was the crowning event of Alexander's policy of merging the Macedonian and Iranian populations. While Alexander was alive, Ptolemy had three children with his mistress Thais, who may also have been his wife. Ptolemy, who distinguished himself as a cautious and trustworthy troop commander under Alexander, also proved to be a politician of unusual diplomatic and strategic ability in the long series of struggles over the throne that broke out after Alexander's death in 323. Because of the outset that the generals could not maintain the unity of Alexander's empire, he proposed during the council at Babylon, which followed Alexander's death, that the satrapies, the provinces of the huge empire, be divided among the generals. He became satrap of Egypt, with the adjacent Libyan and Arabian regions, and methodically took advantage of the geographic isolation of the Nile territory to make it a great Hellenistic power. He took steps to improve internal administration and to acquire several external possessions in Cyrenaica, the easternmost part of Libya, Cyprus, and Syria and on the coast of Asia Minor, these, he hoped, would guarantee him military security. Although he maintained a friendly relationship with Greece, he also succeeded in winning over the native Egyptian population. Around 322 BC, he married Eurydice, daughter of Antipater, regent of Macedonia. They had five children before she was repudiated. Ptolemy married once more to Berenice, Eurydice's cousin, who had come to Egypt as Eurydice's lady-in-waiting with the children from her first marriage to Philip. Then after many conquests and battles, he named himself king of Egypt. After naming himself king, Ptolemy's first concern was the continuing war with Antigonus, which was now focused on the island of Rhodes. In 304 Ptolemy aided the inhabitants of Rhodes against Antigonus and was accorded the divine title Soter, the savior, which he was commonly called from that time. I'll cover all his rivalries and wars in another video. 
So make sure you are subscribed. Ptolemy won over the Egyptians through the establishment in Memphis of the Serapis cult which fused the Egyptian and Greek religions. Through restoration of the temples of the pharaohs, which had been destroyed by the Persians, and through gifts to the ancient Egyptian gods and patronage of the Egyptian nobility and priesthood. Finally, he founded the museum, a common workplace for scholars and artists, and established the famous library at Alexandria. Besides being a patron of the arts and sciences, he was a writer himself. In the last few years of his life Ptolemy himself wrote an eyewitness history of Alexander's campaigns. Although it is now lost, it can be largely reconstructed through the extensive use made of it later by the historian Arian. Ptolemy personally sponsored the great mathematician Euclid. He found Euclid's seminal work, The Elements, too difficult to study, so he asked if there were an easier way to master it. According to Proclus Euclid famously quipped, Sire, there is no royal road to geometry. During Ptolemy rule of Egypt, he put the country on a sound economic and administrative footing. Since he did not want to fall under the influence of the priests and officials at Memphis, Ptolemy's first decision was to move the country's capital to Alexandria. Since it was on the Mediterranean Sea, it was strategically better, providing easier access to both the sea and his homeland of Greece. Because of this move, Alexandria became more of a Greek rather than Egyptian city. Greek became the language of both government and commerce. Ptolemy began the construction of the Pharos, a lighthouse which was later completed by his son Ptolemy II. The lighthouse of Alexandria was a massive structure of three stories with a statue of Zeus atop. A beacon was visible for miles and was lit day and night. It became one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. After the death of Alexander in 323 BC, Ptolemy retrieved his body as it was en route to be buried in Macedon, placing it in Memphis instead, where it was later moved to Alexandria in a new tomb. Several times during his life Ptolemy was proclaimed a deity by certain classes of people. Ptolemy died in 282 BC. After his death, his descendants would rule Egypt for almost 300 years until it was conquered by Julius Caesar and the Romans. Cleopatra, a famous queen of Egypt was born in this dynasty. Many people don't even know about this. She was not Egyptian. Like her ancestors, she was Greek and the only member of the Ptolemaic dynasty to ever learn Egyptian language. After Ptolemy's death, he was raised to the level of a god by all the Egyptians and a festival was held in his honor for years to come. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please tap the thumbs up icon and subscribe to this channel. It motivates me to make more videos. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.